Hello all. So I am here to finally be able to rank my Caspar Noé films. So I finally finished his filmography last night. So I am so excited to be able to finally do this. And as far as I could tell, I could not find on the tier list website um, a list that included his films as of late. So I went ahead and made my own that does include them. If you already made one, I'm so sorry, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So I made my own that include Lux Eterna and Vortex. And so for my rankings that I made, the top best of the best, my favorite of all of his films is going to be the DMT category because Gaspar Noé, I don't know for firsthand experience, but from what I know of people who have used it, Gaspar Noé at his best is what DMT does, you know, like the whole, it's like when Paltrow said, make you dance, sweat, cry, laugh, it'll make you do everything great and bad, but ultimately you will come out the other end better. <laughs> and the Spike Sangria is the ones that are fun, still fun, I like them, but uh, kind of like, whoa, I wasn't expecting this, you know, because it spiked. So you're like, oh, I wasn't expecting this, but depending on your mood or your mindset, it can, it can be good. But if, depending if it's not, it could be not so good. <laughs> and then the red tunnel is for those that are a little bit more edgy, a little more dangerous. <laughs> but, um, but I still ultimately like, I just have a little bit more hesitancy towards Rewatching and recommending. And The Void is for the films that are just forgotten, just floating all alone in the void. Uncontroversial, non impactful, and just, yeah. And then we have Rectum, which these are for the films that resemble something that would be long in a rectum. <laughs> The ones that are a complete and total waste and should never see the light of day ever again. <laughs> so we'll start in chronological order with Carne. So this is Gaspar Noé's first film, I guess. Uh, it's a short film and it is a prequel to Svecontre Tu or I Stand Alone. And both feature Philippe. I don't know how to say his last name, Philippe Um, he's a, He was a French actor. He passed away recently, but he was featured in three Gaspar Noé films. So it was really interesting to be able to watch Carne finally, like after all this time. So I will definitely put it in Red Tunnel. It was a lot better than I expected. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought. Um, for those who don't know, it does have a um, it the main character is a butcher. He is a horse butcher, so the opening features a slaughter of a horse for meat for consumption. Just in case you don't know and don't like, I personally didn't watch it. I entirely averted my eyes throughout the whole part. And so th there's that. <laughs> if you want to avoid it, that's a fair warning from me that it's totally okay for you to not watch it. It doesn't matter at all. I didn't watch it and I don't think it made it any less enjoyable for me, <laughs> to be quite honest. Very surprising. <laughs> not. <laughs> but yeah, and now we're going to go to... The follow-up to this movie, which is I Stand Alone, like I said, also stars Philippe, and this is kind of more of like the feature, more of like a feature-length film and like a continuing of the story that is presented in Carne, so this one is going to go right alongside it because I feel like they complement each other really well. I feel like the previous one gives a really good amount of context, a lot more understanding of the character. I feel like if you 
start from I stand alone from the character. It's interesting, like, that's what I did. I saw I stand alone before Garne, and it's just interesting to see the context of this man and how he got to be where he was and like not only physically but like the state how he got to be in the emotional mental state that he ended up being in I Stand Alone and the previous film gives it that necessary context and I feel like I understand a lot more and I understand him a lot more and his motives for what he does and his point of view it I feel like it's done really well and next is i'm not even going to be able to say it in the per in the proper pronunciation in the french way ich ich was i'm i just i'm so sorry to the entire country of france that was appalling irreversible <laughs> and honestly i can go on for days about this movie but i won't i'm just we're going to have to breeze through it because if I get started, I won't shut up. It's it's up here. It's at DMT. It is peak Noe. Everything good about him is in this movie. And it's amazing. The score, everything about it, the story, the style it's done in, non-chronological order, everything about it is perfect. I just, I can't get enough of it such a well-made movie. I All right, and now we have Enter the Void. So Enter the Void is going to go in, I don't have too much to say about it, it's going to go in Spiked Sangria because I like it and I watch it and I own it, but there's, for some reason, I don't know if it's the length or what, but there's something always that stops me from like always rewatching it. Like there are other like climax, I think I've probably watched even more than Into the Void. Just there's something about it that I think I feel like I just for some reason don't connect to as much as the other ones. And I do find it interesting though that it's I barely noticed recently. <laughs> that it's his only film that is set outside of France. So that's interesting. It's funny. I was like, wait, that's the only one that takes place anywhere outside of France in Tokyo. So yeah, I, I enjoy it. I really like, I actually do really like the plot. It's just for some reason, I don't know exactly what it is that stops me. It's pretty harrowing. I feel... It might be a weird opinion, but I kind of feel like it's. it might be more harrowing. I don't, I don't know. I have kind of a harder time watching it more than, than Irreversible, which is might be weird. But yeah, I won't give it away. But there's an instance in there where I'm like, oh, wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's still a fun watch. I would still tell people to watch it. And despite that scene though, I kind of feel like it is entry level Gaspar Noé. So, I like it. The I the credits and the score for this movie are amazing. And the lighting is like some of the best that he's ever done. It's just amazing. <laughs> so now we have Love. <clears throat> I love love. <laughs> I love this movie. I feel like a lot of people don't like it and I don't know why. I feel like I love the... Okay, we have John Carpenter on the soundtrack. Need I say more? Truly, do I need to say any more? I love the story. I love the, yeah, the score, everything about it. I really like Carl Guzman's performance in this one and I don't know I it's it's sweet I don't know it's weird I I feel like it's a sweet movie and it's sad and oh yeah I really like it so it's gonna go up with Irreversible oh yeah oh it sure is 
both movies about a couple. <laughs> so, Climax is also one of my favorites. This one is amazing for the simple fact that it is, what is it, 90, I think it's 97 minutes of film with 96 minutes of music in it. It's like pretty impossible to spoil this one, but um, this one's from 2019 and it, it features the most amazing dance scenes I've ever seen put on film ever 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 so I feel like this is really good entry level Gaspar Noe as well as Enter the Void I feel like this is probably honestly I feel like if you've never seen his movies Climax to me is the perfect one to start with I personally think so and then probably like then Enter the Void and then love and then everything else climax is really good and even if you don't want to watch his movies which i understand i would seriously though recommend you like because youtube took off the dance scenes that they had on here they had them ever since the movie came out and now they're gone which is not nice but yes if you want to see Find a friend who has this movie and just have them play it for you up until the second dance scene is over and you'll be good. You don't really need to see anything, but you really need to watch those dancing. Everyone needs to see those dance scenes. They are the best. And yes, the soundtrack, amazing. Um, we will... I know it's really on the nose. We're going to put it in Spike Sangria because... I do like to rewatch it a lot. It's one of my favorites, really one of my favorites of his. I think the only thing that holds me back is this is this movie is weird and I don't know if anyone else feels this way. Let me know if like this is how you felt watching Climax. So Noe is known for like his intense, like very intense realism. And the interesting thing that I find personally about Climax is I'm not going to give any away, but at the end, there's the way it ends was the very first time I was ever watching a Gaspar Noe movie and was like, I feel like I'm watching a movie and it's really weird. And I feel like if you've seen all of his movies, you'll know what I mean by like why that's odd and why it's like kind of jarring because, because they are so steeped in realism that like they kind of, a lot of them I feel like just end they they just end in like a way that some like big life life event would end in real life it like it kind of like things in life don't really have a monumental like start and end really they kind of just like go and the way for some reason the way climax ends just makes it just feels very movie like to me like i just and it's ironic because i feel like a lot of people say when they're watching other regular movies and they're like if something's too realistic they feel like it takes them out of it because it like feels too real and like they feel more connected to it and they don't really they like I guess appreciate the separation with Gaspar Noé though I feel like it's inverted because everything is so realistic that like when something feels like a movie like when something happens and it feels like a scene from a movie it, it's weird it's jarring and I still don't know what to make of it all these years later. So, <laughs> but I still love it. It's amazing. We have Lux Eterna, which I just watched last night and I'm still really fresh. So it's like hard to exactly like think of everything of what I think about it. But initially I want to say that I really liked it. I really liked the cast and they were great. There's an actress from the Neon Demon who was in this, and ah, uh, that's the only thing is like I wish this movie was longer. It's only like fifty minutes or so, or like maybe a little over. It's under an hour, and Vortex, the next movie, is over two hours. And this may be this may have been a crazy thought, maybe a crazy thing to say. I just wish 
I personally think both films would have benefited better. Maybe, possibly, maybe, I don't know. I'm just saying, not saying, just saying. I think if Lux Eterna was two hours and whatever, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and Vortex was 50 minutes, I think that would have been ideal. I feel like that would have been optimal for both movies. I feel like Vortex, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I feel like Vortex would have benefited definitely from, I think it would have made the exact same impact that it did on me if it was 50 minutes or a little over. Whereas Lux Eterna, I feel like I I could have been in that for a lot longer. I, I feel like the setup was amazing for what it was. It's like a meta like commentary, which I love. I love a meta fictional whoop meta fictional story so so much. Same breaking fourth wall thing. And I really love that. And I just wish personally that we could have been with all these people because I love that they're they are like using their real names for their character so like Charlotte is Charlotte Carl's Carl so and Carl Guzman makes another appearance in this one and I could have been with him more Carl who um was in the Neon Demon was so amazing in this like she really I was obsessed with her like that's the only thing is I just wish it was two and a half hours. Maybe for some reason Gaspar Noé might have might have made a whole movie and maybe he's just hiding it. Maybe he'll give us a rest. <laughs> I doubt it. But I'm gonna put it for in Spike Sangria. I really like it. I definitely think it's it's very digestible, very easy consumption. So last we have Vortex and this one was I can't remember exactly if love made me like actually well up and cry but I went to see Vortex in the theaters and there were multiple instances where I just started crying in this movie because of sadness because of happiness because of like just how how like really closely it hit to home like everything about the plot was just so so close to my heart it was actually very hard to see but I loved every second of it it was so amazing Dario Argento oh my gosh I loved him in this he was so like he was so dramatic and amazing <laughs> I loved it and there's not too much music in this one, but the music that is featured is, I won't spoil it, but it's really amazing. I love that this song has like made a little resurgence recently. It makes sense for, I really like this one. It has similar themes, like how all of his movies do. They all kind of have themes that relate to each other. It's, it reminds me so much of Enter the Void. So it's a really interesting perspective from like an older couple and seeing their last days and I really really loved it although like I was saying earlier the only thing is I personally feel like it could have uh it could have been 50 minutes I think it would have had the exact same impact I will admit I felt like I was being demanded of quite a bit <laughs> at like having to sit for over two hours watching it. It was a lot. But I'm going to go ahead and put it in Red Tunnel. I like it. I just think the length is very, very intimidating for me. And just the story is another very harrowing story, but also has a, quite a bit of heart. Like the movies that he has made that I feel completely is heartfelt and sad and and we know that it's heartfelt because if you read up on him he'll talk about like how it was you know heavily based on real life events close to him and his family so and that that definitely comes through 
I enjoyed it a lot. So yeah, that is my tier list for all of Gaspar Noé's films. I guess I don't want any to be in the void in the rectum. It's very hard to forget a Gaspar Noé film. Like, it being in the void, you would have to not be paying attention because there's no way. <laughs> and yeah, none, I feel like none of them are terrible. Like, I don't think he's ever made a bad movie. There's just varying degrees of, like, what I would want to watch. So, that is all. So, yeah, I will, of course, leave the link for this tier list. I would love to see how you guys rank yours. Uh, please don't bite. I don't think people, I think the second one is where people will have some issues, but I feel like most people agree Irreversible is one of his best. But yeah, I would love to see how you guys rank them. And yeah, I will probably, hopefully, do more of these pretty soon once I get through some more director's filmography. There's there's a lot. That's a lot of movies. It's It took me this long to just finish one director, and he's made a feature-length movie, so it'll be a while probably, <laughs> but I definitely want to do more. These are really fun. So yes, thank you if you made it this far, and I will hopefully see you next time.